Yellow is a competitive menace in OPO6. At the forefront is Yellow Katakuri. See, I'm not going to go on a rant or anything because I, I think the game is what it is and Yellow is definitely a part of it. And Katakuri isn't even super dominant. It has taken a few events uh, this last weekend for OPO6 and probably will in the upcoming future. But I think what we have to discuss is all of the support that Yellow has gotten in OPO6 in the last couple sets. Now, when we take a look at a modern category decklist, we do see quite a lot of triggers. And, you know, it's not even that bad. I think what it comes down to is what the triggers can do, what they possibly can do throughout the game, and as well as the support that it has behind it. We do have Kiko Nojo, which uh, outside of blue is just gonna stick there and give your opponent a life. We now have You're the One Who Should Disappear, which in category, if you see it early game, you can slap that thing down right to the bottom of your life. And uh, that trigger effect is going to be a complete annoyance for your opponent. We also have Onami as another trigger, kind of replacing Thunderbolt, but it is pretty dang good to have some counter power in hand too. And of course, now we have Reject, which is now scheduled to be banned, but it is a game ender like no other. Of course, we have all of the big mom support from the seven drop and the 10 drop. And I don't think uh, there's another yellow leader that plays it better than Katakori. He's just generically strong and it's something to get used to. This, of course, was the first place list out of one of the most recent events. And you can find that on eggmanevents.com. Here's my list, pretty similar. And it is something that uh, I've gotten used to as far as the ratios go, and as well as my personal choices for that. Not completely different, but I think the most important part is how it works. And uh, let's take a look at that using the sim. All right, so the first game we're gonna take a look at is gonna be against Yamato. We did open a couple of different things. I think this is Pulse Mulligan. Yeah, we did Pulse Mulligan as well. Uh, he opens the Wano Momo to look at the top five and grabbed a uh, coat ski, I believe, or, oh, he grabbed something else. Sorry about that. Um, after swinging with the pudding, that was an easy one. He actually swings with his Izu or his Izu. He <laughs> taps down with the Izu and swing with his leader. So not doing the quite, or not doing the, the things that I think Yamato should be doing, or at least like I should be expecting. I swing eight, send the Amaro to the bottom after swinging with Paro and have another Paro in hand. So both of them are gonna come out. Hopefully we get two different draws with them too. And uh, two Kiku Nojus, uh, Nojo is uh, not amazing, I gotta say, but we do pick up a 10 drop Big Mom. Uh, I don't think the other two targets were valid. And I think what we gotta do here is just swing seven, swing seven, and then play a Kiko Noju. Nojo, uh, he, he gets the 2K back, which is no problem. I'm gonna keep the 2K back on top. So that way we actually have some counter power in hand because we literally do not have anything. He has the block after putting the Izo, um, Izu, whatever, <laughs> into life from the five costs. And we still have the Paro. Uh, very tempting to swing into it. Uh, he's at seven Dawn or eight Dawn, I do believe actually. And now he has a uh, whole Nami, which is uh, pretty annoying to deal with because now he can put down a bunch of Dawn, which is going to put all of it. I'm not going to contest that. We lose out on our 2K and as well as our other 2K. So that's a bummer. We're going to swing here for five, bait out the blocker a little bit here and uh, continue to swing out. You know, uh, we don't have like amazing cards in hand, but we do have the... Kiko Nojo, and as well as our Sanji, we know that they have the Izu uh, in hand, so they can easily get rid of our Sanji, or tap it down, that is. But he does let the the Momo go, which is pretty interesting. He could have just saved that with one card, but that's all right. He plays a Yamato. At max, he has 7k swing, 6k swing, or two 6ks. So if he swings into my Peril, that's no problem. We take it, we get another draw. Uh, swings to the Kiko Nojo, we get another life, which is also good. Um, we get the draw for the Struzen, which is awesome, because we have a 2k for that, and a 2k for the 6k swing. 
And now it just really comes down to you playing Big Mom, which, you know, I, I'm cool with. Because uh, I don't think we really have a choice. We can swing out uh, to their board and maybe swing out to their life. But I think it's probably better just to do it next turn. Because we come, we already know that our Amaro is at the bottom of our life, right? So you got to realize that um, that's going to be our saving grace no matter what. Like if he puts down uh, 7 Hody um, and then like do double double attack with the Banish or something like that. Something crazy. Uh, it, we should still be okay because we know that the Amaro is there. So, uh, we have four life, and it's pretty much statistically po impossible unless we completely mess up or our triggers from now until the Maru uh, is really bad. So, that's the biggest uh, selling point of Katakuri. You know, we know exactly where our triggers are sometimes, and it really does help out. We do get the Kika Nojo uh, for free, and then we take this one, uh, and then now he has seven for our... Uh, the Hody, but that doesn't really make much difference. I should have put the Linlin too, by the way, just in case. Uh, but we uh, we basically, again, just make it where they just cannot win, even with the Hody Jones. So uh, he does block her up, get the Momo out, and another Momo out, the one drop and the five drop. Uh, I don't think that's really going to do too much for us, or for them, I should say. I BM'd. <laughs> this is a complete BM, by the way, because they can easily win by countering out my <laughs> the rest of my attacks. Um, I didn't have to do this. I, I'm going to let you know I didn't have to do that, but they really didn't have a hand. So there is that for that match. All right, next up is Sakazuki. It's pretty much the matchup you'll have to get used to. This one and Gecko. Uh, Gecko is a bit of a 50-50. So is Sakazuki, to be honest. I, I don't think there's really many uh bad matchups out there and unfortunately us going first um is a bummer you want you want to go second especially against sakazuki and we're also a bummer that we um uh whiffed on the pudding but you know with our Paro sparrow and as well as our Godatsu, it's not gonna be too bad going first so we're gonna see most of our curve here and i think we're just gonna swing out here these are block the free block and then we just got to his brand new it doesn't really matter because he didn't play kuzan if you if you play kuzan that would have been a little different uh just wish that you know he stayed at five and instead of removing the the paro uh he does remove the uh Godatsu with the brook brook is kind of a cool card but uh you know that is what it is one Significant thing that we just did there is swing uh, a bunch. He goes down to zero, and we put the beige to the bottom. That's a that's a very important thing to do, not only in this matchup but just in general. So uh, he goes to a lot of cards in hand, and so do I. With mostly pretty decent uh, cards overall, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to you know decide what we want to do with the cards in hand. We do have a pick uh, a 10 drop big mom and we're not quite at one to use this on Maru for their Borsalino, but we do have our uh, eight cost category. So I think what we do here is just play eight cost category. Uh, we go into the Borsalino and then that is uh, going to be the, uh, uh, the best target for our 10 drop big mom to trash. Although, you know, <clears throat> this could be a better, uh, a better uh, situation for us because, you know, a bit of annoying that we all only have two Ks. Uh, we're going to face a Brook here. We might see, yeah, Sabo. Again, a little of annoying, but uh, we pretty much are guaranteed to be fine for the next turn. Uh, getting rid of our two Ks in hand. And I think we just go ahead and Big Mom swing at the brand new and pass because they're just going to take the free block. Now, <clears throat> what's important here is that basically what we have to do is um, take life until about one and then start defending. We do have the zero cost uh, yellow card here to get us to a decent number. And we're just going to get out of these uh, easy ones. I think uh, I think I should have took the, the damage up until that because now we're in a little bit of a predicament where uh, we could have rested with uh, Maru for the Borsalino and then um, have two really big swings between Big Mom and uh, uh, our leader. But that's all right. We're just going to 
go through and swing big on both. And basically we're just going to have a uh, Sabo block this one. It's just, you know, no brainer on that one. We have three life top card is a seven cost. It's going to be good fodder for our zero cost, uh, event card. Uh, pr probably a good time to use it, but I think we're just not going to do that just yet. We're going to use this for the seven K swing. And then, uh, basically what's going to happen here is if he swings, he, uh, can possibly take game, but it doesn't look like the case. I think we're just going to go ahead and swing 14 and then, uh, swing the rest 14 K from there. And he actually gets there. So <laughs> that huge hand was not, uh, not a bluff. That is the, that is the thing here. So we don't trigger that because we need the 2K in hand for these other cut, uh, these other swings. And now uh, we have pretty much the perfect amount of counter power. And now the last card in our life is the beige. So that's why it was super important. And that's why category is so annoying to deal with. <laughs> it is an absolute menace being able to put the beige to the bottom and then kind of plan it out through all of our counter power and he hit him with the, he hit us with the LOL GG among us kind of thing going on. Well, uh, we already knew that we, we did this super, super early into the game and, uh, we had the right amount of counter power in order to get out of these attacks. So yeah, if I had to do it again, I probably would have let those first two attacks go through. So that way I had the Amaro live and then rest down the poor Salido and then, uh, swing twice with the leader in as well as, um, um, big mom. However, because we did swing to 16 that one time, uh, he had enough cards in hand. So I think at the time I was just thinking, I was like, okay, well he has a huge amount of cards in hand. He cycled through everything, used the leader effect a bunch of times. And, uh, I don't think I can get there. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So that's why I defended that way. All right. Last game is going to be our, uh, Raiju, Raiju match matchup. Uh, it's going to be, this one's like, I don't know. I, I can't say that you're favored, right? We opened a bunch of 2Ks. I think we kept this hand. If not, then, hey, this, it's not bad for these 2Ks. I think what, what really gets out of hand is um, the 7K swings through Ichiji. And, um, you know, sometimes it, it just becomes a little much with those and as well as all the 5K attacks like through uh, Reiju and etc. cetera. And uh, they are discarding quite a lot of them. But uh, Kaya is, is really good for getting those targets in the bottom or the... the uh, uh, into the trash to play them off. We didn't see the Amaru. We put it to, to the bottom. Uh, we swung seven and use the rest of our Dawn to play another Pero. Uh, so he's probably going to swing into our Pero, which is perfectly fine. We're going first as well. We're going second, actually. So our, one of these falling turns, we're going to play the seven drop Big Mom. And maybe we can find another one. But nope, we're going to find a 10 drop, which is still just as good. I think what we got to do is just swing uh, nine and then swing eight. We can probably do the other way around, but it's okay. Get a Shruzen at the top, which is a perfect card to get. Raju uh, usually holds a pretty decent hand, five, six, seven cards around there. And uh, they can get out of most attacks. So no surprise that they got out of these. And uh, we're going to get out of these attacks. We've got the Ichiji. Uh, on board and not quite the seven drop yet. There it is. So minus 2k going to swing into my peril. Going to be easy option for us. The only target is going to be the other peril. Reject goes down to the bottom. So that's a bit of a bummer. But what we're going to do in this next turn is just probably swing into one of the Reju's. Uh, check our life because why not? I already knew what it was. I don't know why I did that. Probably should have checked theirs. And then we're going to play the seven drop. Uh, and probably get a life back because you probably don't want to go down to one against Katakuri, especially with reject being alive and as well as our, our, our 10 drop. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this. See if he wants to take the life or give us one. And we do get one out of that. So the seven or 7k and as well as a 5k, a little, a little menacing. A little menacing. Uh, we do take this one. I think I should have countered out <coughs> that's okay because like you know our our hand is getting pretty cloggy that's one of the downsides to um playing category for sure 
We're playing we're playing uh, five. He's just going to use some of those cards in hand. I think one of the reasons why is because uh, as uh, Reju, you do want to keep your hand a little lower because of the five or less requirement. But we're going to go ahead and just play the big bomb. Nope, no surprise there. Like our hand doesn't really call for anything else anyway. Like our, our one drop and three drop are really not going to do anything for us. So I think it's probably better just to do that. We do get the free draw. Get out of the first or the second the seven key swing. And honestly, if you want to swing with the, the blocker, that's fine. But they're going to go ahead and use that. We have a reject in hand. Doesn't really matter. We're going to save that for the future turn, I think. Uh, they're actually going to use their hand to get out of this one, which means one of the blocks are going to be for the for the uh, the queen and the big mom. And if he blocks here, that's fine. That's cool. He actually uses a card out of hand, which is also fine. That's cool. 12k to phase. We're going to get the queen out. So this is the situation uh, that you put other players as category. Uh, that becomes incredibly difficult for them. You know, it, it's it's just a lot. <laughs> I don't I don't know how else to say it. Like facing two big moms, four life, two li or four life, when we were at two or three, or could be at two or three, and then um, with them being at zero life, it hasn't changed since OPO three. So uh, in OPO six, we just get more tools. Reject is one of them, and that's going to be super relevant when it comes to uh, taking down this queen. We we haven't had an option as yellow to take down a five or less and reject provides that. And uh, as we get our Sanji back to hand, which is a little annoying, but that's not too broad, too big of a deal. Swing the two minus six from the minus two doesn't do too much, but I think our reject is just going to go ahead and uh, help us take the game. Didn't really need it because we have two big moms, but I wanted to showcase it and show like, Hey, it's a thing. It is a thing for sure. Uh, that judge really didn't do too much other than just put a lot of stuff on the board. And yeah, I think our opponent, uh, <laughs> this is sped up, of course, but eventually concedes. So there you go. If anything, uh, that is Katakuri in OPO6. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think yellow is an issue? Do you think it's perfectly fine? Or is this what's needed to balance out the game uh, through RNG and as well as how yellow operates? Uh, I would love to hear everyone's, you know, Opinions, <laughs> hopefully. I, I mean, last time I, I talked about yellow or Sakazuki, well, one, Sakazuki got banned, and two, I got called a yellow apologizer, like a like a person who loves yellow wants yellow out there, <laughs> which is like opposite. I want I want other decks to 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 thrive. I want Ace to win an event again. So like, <laughs> like like, come on, come on. I, I don't ask for much. I'll, I'll see you in the next one.